Good morning friends. I hope and pray that all of you are safe from the pandemic COVID-19. We can all utilize this 21 days of lockdown to learn something new and improve our knowledge. We chartered accountants are experts in auditing, finance, taxation laws and other business matters. However, when it comes to information technology, specifically its hardware, we know very little about them. Most of us do not know the devices which are part of our own office infrastructure. We are generally dependent on our IT vendors for any improvements. I am CEO Adarsh Chandak and I am going to share my knowledge on the office IT infrastructure and its improvement. I shall talk about hardware related parts and am also going to suggest some changes through which we can improve the performance of our computer and computer network. I shall also discuss about wireless network security including guest network. Before we learn as how we can improve the speed of our desktops or laptops we first need to know about it part basically any computer system has three parts input processing and storage and then the output we all know about the widely used input devices the keyboard and the mouse and also about the output devices the monitor or the printer their performance cannot be increased most of us wrongly refer the processing and storage unit as the cpu However, CPU is just a part of the processing and storage units. Its main parts are the motherboard, the fan and the processor, RAM, storage device and the power supply. All the five are fitted together in a box called the cabinet. The cabinet can be considered as the chassis of a car. The motherboard can be compared to the driver seat. Just as the most of the functions of the car are located at the driver seat, most of the functions of the computer are also located on the motherboard all devices whether internal or external are connected directly to the motherboard the leading brands are asus gigabyte and msi it is powered by a device called the smps which can easily be compared to the engine of a car smps powers the motherboard the internal storage and the cd drive the processor or the cpu is that part which carries out all the processing of the data the popular brands are intel and amd its speed is speed is measured in gigahertz 9 generation intel and ryzen series of amd are the latest processors cpu generates a lot of heat therefore a fan is mounted on top of the processor it can be considered as the radiator and the coolant of a car just like if there is a problem in the radiator the car overheats and eventually breaks down similarly if the fan is not working properly the cpu will overheat and the computer will work slow and in extreme heat conditions it will shut down with time dust accumulates in the fan thereby reducing the cooling power it is imperative that we clean the fan on a date uh, on regular intervals ram is that part of the computer where the programs are run whenever we execute a program it is the ram where the program is first mounted and then executed Whenever the computer system is running at any given point of time many other operating programs operating system programs are also running thereby limiting the available memory of ram increasing the ram will increase the speed the recommended size of ram is at least 4 gb to increase ram size one can either add another ram or replace the existing one with a higher capacity the latest is ddr4 generation Internal storage is widely called the hard disk however hard disk is only one type of internal storage there are other types of internal storage such as ssd a third device called the hybrid device which is a combination of hdd and ssd is also available but very not very popular here we compare ssd and hdd ssd have a better access time it can provide up to 6000 random iops while hdd can only provide up to 400 failure ratio energy consumption cpu power waiting time of ssd is also low however ssds are relatively expensive than hdd say a samsung 250 gb ssd is costlier than 2 tb hard disk upgrading your internal storage from hdd to ssd will increase the speed of your computer significantly yes significantly we shall see in the next slide Let us look at the effect of an SSD on an old computer. This laptop is 10 years old. I am just switching it on.
As you can see, this laptop is up and running in less than 15 seconds. I have some suggestions as regard the appropriate type of storage for different computers. In our offices, we generally have data stored on one or two computers which is shared within the network. These computers need larger storage and also faster write speed. We can have both types of devices, lower capacity SSD say 240 GB for the operating system and other programs and a higher capacity HDD say 2 TB for other data such as Word, Excel, PEX and Tally data. For other computers where data is not stored, we can use a, either a 120GB SSD or a 240GB SSD. For machines older than 5 years, the motherboard has to be checked for the support of SSD. Till now we had talked about the hardware related parts and its improvement. We now talk about the software related parts and how to increase the speed of the computer through the software. Most of us use genuine Windows operating system and not the cracked version. To those who do not use the genuine operating system, please use the genuine operating system. It saves you from the legal trouble associated with piracy and also other security issues. Same goes for Microsoft Office. One can always use OpenOffice or the Google Suite. Whenever we install some software on our computer, the software may add a command in the operating system to run the program automatically along with it at startup. This results in additional boot up time and RAM consumption. These programs more often than not are not required to be loaded at the start. Disabling, to, disabling them to start in the beginning will reduce boot up time and also free up RAM space. We can do this by using in the Windows 10 through the Task Manager for other versions of Windows through the MS Config Sys, Sys executed through the Run module. Please have sufficient space in your internal storage as each program when executed creates temporary files which are required for the running. If ample storage is not available then it may, difficult, it may become difficult for the program to run. We all have an habit of keeping the web browsers open even if we are not using them. These web browsers when open use a lot of RAM and CPU power thereby reducing the speed of our computer. Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox particularly take a lot of RAM. Closing the web browser when not in use will free up the RAM and increase the speed of the computer. Facebook is considered to be a very intrusive app. It keeps on running in the background, collecting our behavioral data and consuming resources. It should not be installed on the office computer at least. Microsoft has stopped the support of Windows XP. So it is very necessary that we upgrade our operating system. Those who are running still Microsoft XP, I would suggest them to either convert it to a Windows 7 or Windows 10 operating system. There is one software which I use for my system maintenance, the CC Cleaner. It is free for personal use. It is very easy to operate and gives you load of options such as disabling startup programs, cleaning trash of our computers and many more. We shall now discuss about our office network. We have some idea about the computers but most of us do not know much about IT networking. In our office we have many computers but to avoid duplication of data we store all important data in one or two computers which we wrongly call server and share data of this computer among other computers in the network. The network computers can directly work on this shared data and any work they do is stored back on the original computer itself. Moreover, networking is very much required for resource sharing such as printers, scanners and others. Let's look at the primary parts of our network in our offices. We generally have a router which connects to the internet. It may sometimes provide wireless connectivity and these are then called wireless routers. If the number of computers in our office exceed 4, we require a bridge or a switch. We then have LAN cables through which computers connect to the network and interact among themselves. This interconnection can also be done wirelessly through the means of a wireless router. Some offices have a dedicated firewall device attached to their IT network for security reasons. Let's learn something about our office network first. In case of wired connections, computers are connected with a cable to the switch. The switch is connected with the router also through a cable. For internet connectivity, the router is connected with our internet service provider 
through a cable either LAN or fi optic fiber. In case of wireless connections, the computer is connected directly to the router through wireless technology. Computers cannot directly talk to each other except for peer-to-peer -peer connections which is almost non-existent in present days. They send or receive data only through router. Even print jobs in network printers is transmitted through the router. The cables are attached to the router and computer through a connector which is called the RJ45 jack. Cables have different color wires in them. RJ45 jack at both ends need same color sequence for transmission. If any one wire is in different sequence then the network does not work. In Windows 10, except for public folder, no other data or resource of one computer is available to the other computer on the network without sharing. While sharing, one has to give type of permission like read only or read and write. If read only permission is given, then the other computer cannot make any change to the data. Networking can either be password protected or not. Generally, in our offices, we have networking without password protection. In Windows XP and Windows 7, there are three types of network, home group, work group or public. Windows 10 has two options, private or public. Home group and work group have been merged into private. Every computer on the network has to be on the same type. Let's say there is a Windows 10 PC and a Windows 7 PC. If the Windows 10 PC is on the private, the Windows 7 PC has either to be on a home group or work group. If Windows 10 PC is on public, then the XP also has to be on public. Some complications arise when networking among computers with different versions of Windows. Operating System Let's begin with how to improve the network suite. The first being interconnecting computers in our offices through wires. Wired network connections provide a very stable network as compared to wireless network. It provides better transmission speeds. To improve the transmission speed of a wired network, several changes may be required depending on the existing hardware. First of such change is updating the LAN port or the socket of our computer. If our computer or a laptop is older than 2 years, then probably it has a LAN port which communicates at the speed of 100 Mbps while the latest ones are capable of communicating at 1000 Mbps, that is 10 times more. LAN ports are affixed on the motherboard and they cannot be changed. What we can do is, we can use new hardware device. There are two options to upgrade the LAN port. One is through USB cable, this one, and one is through the network interface card, this one. What USB ones are fairly easy to install. All one has to do is plug one end into a USB socket and attach network cable to the other end. For installing a network interface card, there has to be an empty socket on the motherboard, or mostly available, and also it should be able to support the network interface card where, which we are installing. Most of us use CAT6 cables in our office network. However, if older version of cable is being used, we need to upgrade our LAN cables to CAT6 cables. CAT6 cables are more stable and faster than CAT5 cables. Only CAT6 cables provide 1000 Mbps connections. Also, due care must be taken not to club LAN cable with live electric wire. Lastly required for 1000 Mbps transmission speeds are gigabit switch. For wireless connections, the first point is the location of the router. Suppose in a hall, a speaker is standing in front and then there are 15 rows of listeners. The speaker decides not to use a mic. The sound decreases at it, as it moves forward and sometimes reaches very faintly or not at all in the end rows. However, if the speaker were to stand between the 7th and the 8th row, he would be audible to the whole lot. Similarly, the location of the router is very important to have a complete coverage in the office. If however, we are not able to change the position of the router, we have to install a device called the repeater at appropriate places. The repeater receives these faint sounds and amplifies them further, thereby reaching everywhere. Next comes the wireless router itself. I would suggest having a dual band router which is capable of transmitting at 1200 Mbps that is 1200 Mbps. It should also support the latest 802.11 AC protocols, guest network and gigabit LAN. 
a router of this config features should be sufficient for the next couple of years as per my knowledge. We have now come to the end of network improvements and I would now share some tips to improve network security. Deploying a firewall device, though expensive, is the best way to protect the network against threats of computer virus, worms, ransomware. Changing the default password of the router is also a must. For wireless connections, deploying a guest network for devices that require only internet and hiding the main wireless network are the two steps. Lastly, let's learn about guest network. Have you ever shared your wireless passwords with anyone, even with your clients? If you have, beware. You have given him access to the entire office network. He shall be able to see all the shared confidential data of your office. He can modify them, change them, copy them and even make them unreadable if he wants. So what is the way around? We can deploy a guest network. Guest network, as the name suggests, is just to provide wireless internet connectivity to our guests. They will not be able to access any of our office network resources. For security reasons, always use a guest network to connect mobile phones of your employee and even yours. It will also give you better control over your internet bandwidth. You can restrict the maximum amount of bandwidth that the guest network is allowed. Say you have a 10 Mbps internet connection, you can limit the guest network limit to say 1 or 2 Mbps. All of us are dependent on our office computer and its network for the smooth functioning of our office. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you.